Hello, my name is Kevin from Serpentarium Surplus and Moonlight Mantids. And uh, today I want to do a little bit of video about um, people that ask me questions like, why have a mantis as a pet? Why have a bug as a pet? It's still really weird, it's still really new. Not a lot of us are actually doing it. Um, one of the things I ask is, well, do they bite, pinch, or like stab you? Or I, I, That's what people have asked me. No, uh, they don't do that. I mean, I guess they could like try to nibble on you. Usually when they're kind of like messing, like kind of like trying to like nibble your on your hand or wherever they're usually they're just like kind of licking the salt off your palms and stuff like that it usually means they're thirsty or something um but uh i've actually i've never been like bit or pinched or anything like that and i have like thousands and thousands of mantids for for a while now and um i say you're pretty safe from that they're a pretty safe pet they're totally harmless um people say well how long do they live why why have a mantis, if, why am I going to pay like, you know, like uh, 20 $30 for a mantis or, or even, you know, way less than that, depending on, you know, where you go. And just, you know, why am I going to have a ma mantis for a pet when it's going to live like a couple months and die? Let me just say this. People, you're on the other end of the spectrum when you have a bug or an insect as a pet. Um, being that, like, not everyone is meant to have a cat or a dog for 10 to 20 years. You know what I mean? And sometimes with reptiles, not everyone actually kind of goes through. It's a commitment with pets. You know what I mean? You're taking it in. It's part of your family. It's your responsibility no matter what it is, even if it's a bug. Great thing about that is people that shouldn't have dogs and cats, and that's why we have so many shelters and so many animals that get misplaced, thrown outside, which is like you're evil if you do that because they're not meant to survive. I mean, most like cats and dogs are like, they're they're uh, they're parasites. They basically live off of you, and without you, they don't fare too well. Otherwise, they they're non-native. They destroy the habitat. It, it's it's a no win win. You know what I mean? You have responsibility. You take care of it. And for some people who can't manage to do that, and like to throw their animals outside, praying mantis is for you. All right, not for you to throw it outside, but. By the time you get tired of it, it's probably going to already be in, like, an advanced age. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I have a puppy, you know, come Christmas time, everyone wants a puppy, and then before spring, it's in a shelter, and it's, you know, it's it's already uh, cute past the cute stage, and it's ugly duckling stage, and then, you know, it gets put to sleep, and that's, you know, these pets are on the other end of that. They live for about a year, and that is depending on care. You keep them hot, they'll, they'll metabolize, they're, 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 they're ectothermic completely. They're, they grow based on the food intake they get and the temperature and of course humidity, you think, you know, they gotta stay healthy. But um, the warmer you keep them, the faster they're, and the more food you give them, the faster they'll grow. You kind of, you know, speed them up. You know, a lot of breeders do that. Um, or if you want to like, you know, grow your mantis real big, real fast, you know, that's what you do. Um, if you want a little bit longer lived, you know, kind of stretch it out another six months, you know what I mean? Um, what you're going to do is keep it a little cooler. And by cooler, I mean like low, low 70s. And on the high end, you know, mid 80s. You know, sometimes a little bit more. And then you're getting to the really exotic stuff. But uh, most of the time, mantids live about a year. And that's just fine for a lot of people who should not have pets. And that people that, you know, those people can't, can't make commitments. You know what I mean? So why have a pet that's going to die in like a year? Because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just an insect. You get tired of it, you can, I mean, get, I guess you could try to give it away. Otherwise, put it in the freezer and let it die. You know what I mean? It's an insect. No one's going to shun you for it. You get tired of it, don't throw it outside. You know what I mean? But before you get tired of a mantis that grows like this, you know, when you're keeping it hot which is perfect, you know, it's just fun, it's always exciting, it's always different, always changes, and then, you know, before before you know it, it's gone, and then you're like, yeah, that was awesome, that was the coolest thing ever, and it, so it's basically very inexpensive, even when you're getting into the higher price mantids and stuff, the supplies, period, you're talking full lifetime, like 20 bucks, maybe, you know what I mean, it's just, it's not that much, it's, it's great for a lot of people, for a lot of reasons, for, you know, for kids, perfect, perfect project, you know, like raising caterpillar into a butterfly except for like 10 times cooler because this thing eats caterpillars and you know i've never done that but i'm sure they do um oh which brings me to my next bit uh what do they eat when they're nymphs they're gonna eat things like uh fruit flies and uh, yeah they can eat a lot of other things what are good alternative feed uh, on if fruit flies do it fruit flies do it good basically here's the rule of thumb though as they grow if they can catch it they can eat it i don't care what it is you know what i mean they, they catch it they eat it that's what they eat whatever they can catch, um, and they'll do just fine. Um, 
Now I get another one here, and this is very controversial, and yeah, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to hear anything about it. I don't care what you have to say about it. Th this is how it works, ladies and gentlemen, people that don't quite understand yet. That people ask, are they legal? All right, are they legal? All right. Um, I have one question. I have one answer for that. Regardless of what you say, think, or or find on the internet, whatever bullshit you or whoever you call. Yeah, uh, sure they are. Sure. 100% fine. I'm non-native native fine. All right. What there people like, "Oh, there's permits." I, I'm sure there's a permit for everything if you go looking for it. Yeah, yeah, find 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 a permit, find a permit so you can have a bug and raise it in captivity and then maybe produce a few bugs and give them to your friends or, you know, sell them. On. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You ask for a permit and you bother enough people they will, enough, and we're such a small community, we're not doing it really, but you, you fuck with enough people, excuse me, that eventually they will start, they will try to start putting, they're putting to put their piggies right in the, in the pie and say, all right, we need to regulate this. Well, we're not regulating this because it's not an issue other than, uh, basically, I mean, if you're a mantis keeper at all, you know about like Chinese and like all these little non-natives that are here, which are, um, naturalized, which means they they exist here naturally now, we're not going to get rid of them, they're never going to go away, I don't really believe that, but it, it's not a problem. The reason it's not a problem is because they're a low-impact animal. That's how DNR regulate, you know, all that stuff, that's how they're going to regulate this, anything. They're going to say, what impact does this have, or what impact could it have on the environment? That's what you ask yourself first. What can this one mantis do if worst case scenario it got out? Because it's not going to kill anybody. It's not going to carry some horrible disease or parasite that's going to hurt you. It's not going to happen. All right. But what can it do once it gets outside? Nothing. Um, mantids are somewhat like self-maintaining. Okay. They are not capitalistic on any one species at all. At all. They will catch and eat whatever it is that they can catch and eat. And that's what they feed upon including each other, all right? So not only do they, they don't capitalize on anything, that means they can't hurt anything. They can't hurt any one species greatly, all right? No matter how many there are. On top of that, they cannot overpopulate themselves because they manage themselves, all right? They eat each other, and then they're gone. You know what I mean? Um, we're not going to introduce non-native species because we don't do that, but if it happened, not a big deal. They're low impact, okay? They don't impact anything. All right, that's why these naturalized mantids are not a big deal, and you can buy ooth from China, and it's not, it's not, a, you, don't, don't do that. Don't buy ooth from, you know, other places, you know, it's, it's on you, it's on you, you know what I mean? Because technically that's, it's not right, although ooth are not technically living, and you can't prove that an insect is alive in an egg case, and basically, it's basically a sponge, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not legal nor illegal, because it cannot be proven, and there isn't a paper out there that says, you know, insects in ooths in cases are technically living if you could test to see if they were without cutting them open. I, I mean, it's it's on this very fine line. Technically, no. Don't import them. Don't do any of that. But I'm going to tell you right now that uh, mantids are a low-impact animal. They can't do a lot of damage. They, you know, they, they can take hold in places like anything else, and that's not good because they're fighting with the other native mantids. That's what you got to worry about, what, what little niche they're in. And the niche is everything. So it's really even hard to do that, you know what I mean? Um, so are they legal or are they illegal? I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody, I mean, you can argue with me all you want, there's nobody regulating this. We don't need to ask someone to regulate it. You need to keep it to yourself. Stop discussing it. Stop going, can we do this? Shouldn't we do this? You ask someone if you can or not, they're, you know what they're going to tell you? I don't know. Don't ask people. Don't ask people like your DNR. All this. Don't ask people that know less about the subject than you do. How about we take responsibility as a young hobby culture and, you know, just our own, you know, a growing small tiny hobby that we are now, and we are responsible from the get-go, unlike a lot of these other hobbies that have really just spilled over all over the place. I'll let you know right now, mantids are like 20 steps below what, let me just example, tarantulas. All right, we have a lot of venomous, you know, imported, crazy. Before we ever get targeted, before we're ever on that side of the spectrum, the harmful, possibly harmful things like venomous tarantulas, you know, hot scorpions, things like that, those, are, those will be way before they ever really start to worry about mantids, you know what I mean? 
It's not a big deal. Stop asking, do I need a permit? Do I? No, no. You ask someone to give you a permit, they'll find you a permit. You know what I mean? Are you doing something wrong? No, 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 no. You're, this isn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing that can be hurt by it. All right? You do have a responsibility as a pet owner. Make sure you're doing things humanely. You're not going to feed it. You're not going to take care of it. Don't throw it outside. Put it in the freezer. It'll be dead in 10 minutes. It's, a, it's an insect. It, it will go. It will die. All right? Now, do we need permits? Uh, yeah, no. I'm telling you, no. You find one, it, whatever, ask someone to permit you. Nobody gives a rat's ass. This isn't the war on bugs. This is the war on drugs. All right? That's just, just stop being ridiculous. Stop talking about it. Stop worrying about it. All right? You are not going down for having a couple pet mantis. It's not going to happen. All right? So chill out. Stop worrying about it. All right? Some people are like, oh, this is a serious... Nobody gives a shit. Sorry. Excuse me. No, no. It's not going to happen. Sorry. All right? Uh, where do you get them? There are a lot of great, great places to get mantids. Um, and they're popping up everywhere. I'm so, so excited that it is. It's making keeping certain species in the hobby... Um, easier. You know, it, we're, there's more of us working together now. Don't ever be scared of being like, I'm going to jump into this. This is going to be fun. It, I'm going to tell you right now, it's it's fun as a hobby. Doing it full time and raising thousands of nymphs is horrible, hard, terrible work. Uh, you got, I mean, it's, it's, it, you do lose something in, on the way a little bit. Um, you got to really, really like it and you got to be really, really organized because it's not, it's their insects when they're young, they starve to death in like a day or two or three days and, you know, they need a lot of water and, and you know, you got to take care of a lot of them and you have, you know, huge die-offs when you don't do it right, you skip a basket of these or whatever and you're, you're screwed, you lose them. People are like, oh, well, you know, we need to make them cheaper by having more available. Um, yeah, good luck, you know, I mean, there's more of us now, it might be a little easier. Truthfully, mantids are not a guaranteed thing, you know what I mean? They come and go every season. I mean, it wouldn't take a year for us to lose every species on accident. It can happen. Um, I'm going to make a little breeding tip video pretty soon. Just just a real short thing. But uh, why have a mantis? Uh, you can learn from it. You, it's not Things aren't quite real and you can't quite understand things unless you, you know, you're there and you can touch it. You know, it's important. You know, it's part of our part of the world where we live in, you know, it's just one little piece, one very small piece, and a, a pretty safe piece, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's awesome, well, um, you know, uh, let's see, uh, they don't, they're not gonna hurt you, um, what do they eat, and whatever they can catch, I, you know, people like, don't feed crickets, feed crickets, um, honestly, I feed a little bit of everything, and I've never had a problem, you feed only this or that, let me know how it works. Yeah, it should be fine. I mean, insects are mysterious. It could be something else that's, you know, it could be an ailment due to crickets. So, I would say uh, mantids and crickets are both orthoptrids, and they have a, you know, a similar immune system. And for that reason, they might share a lot of bacteria. When you go in getting, like, stuff from Fluker Farms or uh, Foster and Smith, which are cricket breeders or Armstrong, um, I'm guessing because, you know, like, like you know, factory farming crickets, they I guess they could have a lot of, you know, bacterial problems being their immune systems are quite the same, I'm sure that, you know, they're they're both being orthoptrids, you know, relatively related, that they can, you know, these little diseases like, I mean, Black Death could be just a total virus, you know, I mean, it could be, you know, it just, just try to feed a little bit of everything, keep your animals healthy, um, and, you know, make sure they stay well hydrated, you shouldn't have a problem, you know, they're not hard to raise, this isn't something that happens all the time, it, it's rare, rare, I don't see it all the time, it's randomly, um, permits, <laughs> you, you argue about it, you bring as much attention to it as you want to, and eventually you ask someone to permit you, then they will. And then, then you have an issue. Do we have an issue right now about keeping a harmless low-impact insect? Say, let's listen, to, let's listen to science, all right? Let's listen to the people that know about it. Let's not ask people who write permits or any bullshit or just, you know, I know I'm telling you right now, the reason we also don't have a lot of information on permitting and th things like that the, the real reason is, do you know how many scientists specifically work on praying mantids? It, very, very, very few, and only part-time. There are very, there's just like a tiny amount of like full-time uh, people that actually study these. Um, I'm working on it right now. It's what I'm in school for. I'm telling you right now, it's been a nightmare trying to find somebody who's actually done a lot, of, like like just is wrote the book, you know what I mean? And, and I'm not talking about like these little, you know, these little 
part-time, you know, keepers that have written some books and things like that. I'm talking, you know, scientifically Mantidia. The reason being is, you know, a lot of people like study beetles and, and different things like that because they may have like medicinal qualities and manu uh, medicinal manufacturing companies, you know, you know, health, you know, health, you know, pill company, things like that will pay a scientist or a biologist or whoever, like entomologists, to go in and study these and tear them apart for their medicinal properties because that's something you can make money off of. Mantids don't have anything uh, close to that. They they sh they give us nothing in, in that in that branch. So most entomologists, what do they study? Insects that either are like a pest problem, and that's not a mantis. Mantids are actually like on our side for that. Um, and, and, and insects that have like medicinal qualities. So anything that has between those two little little branches there, that's what's getting studied. Nobody's studying mantis because nobody can uh, nobody's getting paid to study them. So the people that are studying them, it's part-time work. They're not doing much. They're not doing much. So what's known about them? You anyone that asks you, they're low impact, they're not gonna hurt a damn thing. Don't worry about it. We got a good community, and we're all paying attention, and we're not going to have an issue. But you stop bringing it into the daylight, bringing it into the daylight, because it's not going to. They're not going to do a damn thing. They're going to permit the hell out of you, and and it, it's going to ruin the hobby. And th th truthfully, there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong at all. We're way, way in the bottom of the list of the people that give a shit. You know what I mean? Don't don't worry about it at all. Just don't ship them. You know, just watch your Lacey Act. You know, the big guy. Watch the big rules. You know what I mean? Um, that's that's all on you. Um. Where do you find them? And there's, you know, we're popping up everywhere, and I encourage people to start breeding. And I'm gonna start doing a few breeding videos, like just tips and stuff. But um, you know, relatively unknown animal, you know, just, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's important, you know, why I have mantids. Mantids are a little key piece of everything. They are easy to keep. They are totally harmless. Low impact. You are free to have as many as you want. D don't put them outside. That's why you should have a praying mantis. Oh, by the way, if you've ever seen one, they're really, 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 really cool. My snake is gone. Anyway, I gotta go. Thanks a lot, YouTube. I'm gonna have a lot more videos. Sorry again. Oh, by the way, I love the art. There's gonna be so many winners. Just just give me a chance to sift. I'm just so busy. Just just give me a chance. Um, thanks again. Bye!